over and over and over again with bad trades. Okay, it, it's it's not good for you. It's not good at all. But that same broken perspective on relationships manifests itself in trading. And you're probably saying, how the hell did you get on this topic? And this is a good one. Well, it's because I mentor and I have people that are going through divorces. I have people that are going through breakups. And I'm having people that can't find themselves in relationships, despite them being, in my opinion, I can say this on both sides of the, the uh, male and female. I can appreciate a good looking guy. And I can appreciate a good looking woman. And some of these folks that I have as students, they literally have nothing wrong with them physically. They look by all you know, standards, they are attractive. They're successful people. They're doing well in their careers and they're doing well in trading, but they're being plagued by not being balanced by having a significant other. And then because of that loneliness, they go into the marketplace and they push the button to do what? To feel good. They're allowing their personal life to manifest itself in trading. You cannot look for a feel-good experience in trading. <laughs> if you treat it like a massage parlor and looking for a happy ending, don't be surprised if you end up with STD. It's, it's as simple as that. You can't do those types of things. These markets will literally take you out. They'll make you second-guess everything, remove all sound logic, and you'll lose control like a drunken, promiscuous affair on the weekend that your spouse doesn't know about. You'll be in there doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. So why invite it? Why live your life like that to allow manifestations of those types of things in your trading? Folks, this is your business. This isn't a game. This isn't a hobby. If it is, you're doing it fucking wrong. You're doing it wrong unless this is your business and you're minding your fucking business. You're going to fail. Because you are competing against yourself. And if you haven't removed all the toxic things in your life and found coping skills to allow yourself to be fruitful, balanced, productive, disciplined do this don't do that if you can't do those things in your personal life you sure as hell aren't going to do it in trading who's managing you who's your boss who's going to reprimand you for losing money guys you know you hide that money from your wife she doesn't know you're losing that much and ladies you're smart enough to know not to even bring it up Yes, I know all that stuff. <laughs> so you have to, it takes a lot to do this business. And unfortunately, there isn't a lot said about this. And I wish that there were books written about it because those are the books I would promote. Not technical buy and sell here, you know, risk management books, fuck all that. Okay. The things I talked about tonight, that's where the rubber meets the road. That's the that's the brass tacks of it all. Because 90% of this game is psychological war with yourself. But we lie to ourselves and say, oh, I'm competing against the, the smartest people in the world. No, you're not. None of those motherfuckers told you to press that button. None of them told you to do the leverage that you used. And nobody told you not to use a fucking stop loss. You did it all on your own. Congratulations. Well done. But you have to live with yourself. You have to wake up in your own skin tomorrow and the next day and live with yourself. Now, the question is, in closing, is are you doing things that we talked about tonight? Are you allowing your personal life to be loose like that? You're allowing other people to just weigh you down. And they set the tone for your success or lack thereof. Is their opinion of your decisions making your future decisions for you? 
This is not a team sport. It does not matter who likes what you've done, who thinks that you didn't do enough of it. Everybody, if you give them a chance, everybody will have an opinion about your results. Why does it fucking matter? You're never, I'm telling you right now, even my biggest trades, if I sat down with myself, I can beat them up. So why would I invite it to anybody else? None of your opinions about my results matter to me. And that's the mindset you should have. Hey, um, what is your average? Fuck, you don't ask me. It's not your, it's not your fucking business. How does that work for you? Mind your fucking business. How about you talk about what you've done? Well, you know, I was just curious. Fuck you. Don't ask me. You want to talk shit about somebody. That's why you're asking. Don't even invite that stuff. Don't invite it in your personal life. And don't invite it in your trading. And you won't have that problem. That social media equity curve that you're trying to maintain. I'm telling you, if you just simply look around and look at all these guys out here trying to prove themselves. They put so much pressure on themselves. And they would probably be doing 10 times better if they weren't doing it. I'll give you an example. And I promise I'll close. Maybe. <laughs> that guy Corbs. I say, I love, I, he's so charming. I, I really hope he finds the success he's aiming for. If you look at what he's been showing, obviously, you know, his results are improved with him not doing the live streaming. He's promising he's going to come back to live streaming. And I'm only curious, and I'm not wishing anything bad on him. So, Aaron, if you're listening, just know what I'm saying. I'm saying this with love and respect. But I'm curious to see if his good results go back to the lackluster ones when he's in front of everybody again. Because that's what I've been talking about tonight. That is my audience. I'm talking to Corbs tonight. That's who I'm talking to. You think I'm talking to you. <laughs> maybe I am but that type of social media equity curve you know that the outward opinions of others and what would they think of me if I do this wrong and what would they think of me if I don't trade it this way and what if I do this and if I use this entry strategy and they're going to question why I did that if you're doing all that are you really focusing on your trade think about that for a second no, you have now increased the difficulty level to next to impossible. That's very, very hard to do. And I'm not ashamed to tell you, I'm not that good to be able to sit out there in front of the world and let people question and ask and suggest and do other things. OK, while I'm making decisions, that's already hard for me to focus. It's hard for me to focus. And there's no shame in that. But if I'm able to sit down and shut the world off and put myself in front of a, an account, no one's coming close to mine. But I do have kryptonite. Kryptonite is my attention span. I'm easily, I, 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 I'm a dog that chases cars, folks. And just look at how I operate on Twitter. Act like a nail, I'm going to fucking hammer you. <laughs> okay. But I do have a weakness. And I've already shown that. I've said it. I, I, I can't. I physically cannot do in my first mentorship seen that. I tried. I went in with a good intention, but I, I can't stay focused. And I want everyone to feel like they got the best engagement with me. And it's impossible. You know, thousands of people, you know, everybody wants an email response from me. Everybody wants, you know, to get a you know response on Twitter. I can't be everywhere at one time. So I'm practical with myself. As much as I don't like that, I would love to be able to do all those things for everyone, but I can't. So I try to be as upfront and practical as I possibly can in my delivery and the way I, I deal with all of you. I am honest about where my limitations are, and I have no bones about saying this is where my weakness is. My weakness in my trading is always my exits. I'm never satisfied with them. 
Does that make me poor of a trader? No. It means I'm honest. It means that I do have weaknesses. I just don't know how to make them better than they are. And when you have frailties, you have to embrace them. Don't try to hide from them. Because the fact that you're trying to hide from them is the same thing that causes everyone to have drawdown, blown accounts, because you're trying to do what? You're trying to avoid that losing trade. That one singular event where it's now taking something from you. You're trying to avoid that. And the fact you're trying to avoid that singular transaction turns into a series and chain of them, then your account's blown. Because you've ramped up your emotional and psychological impact. You've done that to yourself. That singular trade that was a losing trade, you made it now more significant. That trade cheated on you. That trade went outside of the relationships and the boundaries you set for it. And now you feel betrayed. So what do you want to do? You want revenge. You want to go find that motherfucker that cheated on you. And you go out there and you go into the marketplace looking for him. And you don't find them. You find somebody else. And they take again from you. And they take again and again and again. And you're hurt more each time. And it revs up that emotional and psychological impact. And you want it to go away. You want to feel victory. You want to feel like you've done the right thing. Because if you win, you've done the right thing. In your mind, that's what you're going to tell yourself. If you get the money back, you've done the right thing. And you didn't learn anything from that. When you should have said, I'm stopping. This hurt me. I'm going to take a you know, step back and heal. I'm not going to be in a rush to get into a new relationship, a new trade. But it's not comfortable waiting around for Mr. Right or Miss Right. My sister, she just uh, she got married a couple years ago. I love her to death. <laughs> Different fathers, same mom. She, before she met the guy she's with now, she would be such a drain. Like, oh man, I, I can't even put it in words where it sounds reasonable because <laughs> I don't want to sound rude because I, I, she's my sister. I love her, but she would say, Oh, God hates me. God doesn't want me to be with anybody. And I'm like, listen, girl, you're not even looking for people. You're always working. And you, then you stay in the house. You don't even make yourself friendly or available to anybody. Like you don't go out you don't meet anyone. So how could you possibly meet anyone? You work around the same five people and they're all women. So why are you complaining? Like you got to make yourself friendly and then you can find friends. Well, she said, like, pray for me. So I, I said, yeah, I'll pray for you. But you, you got to do something. You know, you have to make an effort. You got to do these types of things. But she lived for years in this self-defeated mindset. Like, I don't deserve to be happy. I'm being punished. You know, I'm always going to be lonely. I said, you're saying the very thing that's creating that you're, you're creating that environment, that toxic view of everything. And that's why journaling is important. When you're trading, you want to take that feeling of that fear in the early stages. You want to write those fears out in, in plain terms, what you're fearful of. Nobody else is going to read the journal. You shouldn't be letting anybody else read it. So that way you can be honest with yourself. You're talking to yourself. You're being honest with yourself. You're saying, this is what I'm afraid of. Tomorrow when I trade, I'm afraid I'm going to do this. When you're in the trade, what did you find fearful? Were you vocalizing your aggression or fear, anxiety? Oh, it's going to stop me out. I mean, if I get stopped out, I'm going to be a mess. Oh, if this goes to happen, I'm not going to be able to have enough money. I can't, I can't afford to do another funded account challenge or whatever it would be, whoever you're fearful of. And then over time, you replace that with positive self-talk and you remove all negative. In the beginning, it's important for you to tackle where your root problems are, the way you think about things toxically and you don't realize you're doing it until you see it in your own handwriting. And you go back months and years later and say, wow. 
what a fucking train wreck. Cause that's what it feels like when I read my early journals. I'm like, what the hell? Like, I know some of you, because you, it's hard to track somebody with bipolar and I'm all over the place, but I promise you every one of these conversations that I'm starting, I'm coming back to, okay. I'm, 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 I'm going off down these little rabbit trails, but I'm coming back to them. I see that in my early journals and I'm like, what the hell? Like, no wonder I wasn't doing well. Like I, I wasn't even staying focused on one principle or idea. Like I was trying too many different things and not giving it a chance. Well, back to my sister, I told her, I said, you, you got to make yourself available. And all of a sudden, one of the guys that grew up in our neighborhood, young, a decent young man, he started working with her. That was an answer to prayer. Nice guy, nicest guy in the world. He knows I'd break his fucking head if he ever tries to do anything to hurt my sister. He's the nicest person you'd ever meet. But she and him started dating. And they hit it off. Swimmingly. Like, it's amazing how they just clicked. And now she doesn't talk like, oh, woe is me. She's so thankful that she has him as her husband. And he loves her. Like, he adores her because he knows fucking better. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm trying to be funny in that regard. He loves her. He really, really loves her. And that, to me, is a match made in heaven. So she doesn't have that self-defeated mindset. She doesn't charge herself emotionally and psychologically about relationships because she's thankful for what she has. Apply that to your trades. When you do the right thing, Follow your plan. Follow your process. What are you trying to do? Did you move your stop loss correctly? Did you use a stop loss? Did you take partials at logical levels? And did you stay with the trade even though you were probably a little nervous? As long as it was moving in your favor, did you stay with it and let it deliver to your target? If you've done all those correct things, then you should feel good. You should feel good. Not not arrogant. Not walking around like Mick Jagger like I do all the time. <laughs> But it's the positive things that you want to constantly give yourself up at a, at a boy, at a girl type thing in your journal and say, I feel good that I was able to do this. And that way you're replacing what you have to go through the, the early stages of ugliness. Journaling in the beginning, you want to get that out. Find out where your toxic roots and original thought processes that start all these problems. And unless you're honest in the beginning, you're not going to find them. You're going to pretend they don't exist and you're only going to talk like you know, I got everything figured out. You don't want to fake it in the beginning. Okay. Be brutally honest in the journal. That way you can grow from it and find out where these things are, are stemming from. It may be insecurities that are happening in your personal life that even there you're trying to avoid that are making problems for your personal life. That are going to do what? Manifest themselves in your trades. You're going to be trying to do something to feel good. My sister would call me up before she got married to her husband, before she even met him. She would call me up for me to tell her encouragements. You're going to do fine. You're going to meet someone. I promise. We're, let's pray together. She needed that. But she was doing nothing on her part to improve her situation. So... Outwardly, objectively, here I am. I can see what she's doing wrong and, and telling her what she needs to do. She won't listen, much like some of my students. They don't want to listen. Like the things I'm telling you now. Some of you are listening to this saying, what the hell is going on? This guy's all over the place. And you, it, you completely missed the, the point, the plot. You've missed it. I'm telling you how to manage your personal life and how to keep that from screwing up your trading. Because your personal life will fuck up the best signal service, the best fucking guy hand holding and telling you to trade. I could sit down and tell you when I'm buying, do it right there in live stream. Do it still right in front of you. Some of you that have these problems will still fuck it up. Why? You'll say, okay, I got a funded account for $10,000. I'm going full max on this. Boom. I'm in there. I'm in there. I don't give a shit. I'm going all in because I need this to grow quick. If ICT is taking that trade, then it's good enough for me. Full leverage, no stop, let's go. And some of you are laughing, nodding. Yeah, that, that'll be me right now. Why? Because you need something fixed in your personal life. And you're going to take that problem, bring it to the market, so that way the market can solve it for you. And it doesn't work like that. 
All it does is takes your problem, magnifies it, and then presents you with more. You got more problems now. Never thought about trading like this, have you? But that's exactly the reality of it all. And teaching people is what gave me this perspective on it. I only had this limited perspective from me, you know, over the last 30 years and thought, you know, in some instances, I thought it was just unique to me. But then when I started training other people and listening to them and having some of their repeating problems materialize, you know, those things are not unique to me. And the things that you're experiencing are not unique to you. You're a human being, just like I am. We have emotions. Our feelings can get hurt. We can be angry. We can feel insecure. We can feel like our shit doesn't stink and walk around like we own the world. We're all prone to have those experiences and those emotions. But unfortunately, nobody's really mastered the whole psychological approach enough to write a useful book. And that's the book that needs to be written. That's the one. And I basically just gave you a chapter out of the book that I'm writing, just with these topics in mind. Because I think that these, these are the real nuts and bolts to figuring out why people can't become profitable. It's not that you can't find a profitable entry strategy, because there's millions of them out there. There's not that you can't find a strategy that doesn't find setups because there's millions of those out there too. The problem is, is you just like it was me in the beginning of my own career. And nobody likes to hear that. And no one certainly wants to admit it. And some of my students that have failed, they hate. That's what I say. Oh, it's, it's wrong. You're just a terrible teacher. Well, I'm not a perfect teacher and I don't think I'm the best teacher, but I don't lie to you. I tell you the truth. I tell you how to fix it. In my best opinion, the most heartfelt, well-intended instructions, that's what I try to give. Because it would be horrible for me to pretend that everybody could walk into this and do well and not have any hardships. And I've never painted that picture for anyone. It's hard as shit. It is so hard. Only because you are a formidable adversary. Now, if you take all that toxic shit out of your personal life, the way you think about things and people and relationships and how everybody else is supposed to see you, take all that shit and throw it out. Don't give a shit about none of that stuff. Oh, but I'm not wearing the latest threads. Who gives a fuck? Who cares? But I'm not driving the who gives a shit. I can't afford to go eat who gives a shit. That's all stupid stuff. That ain't putting money in your pocket. That's not putting bread in the bank. That's not helping your family. That's not providing legacy wealth. That's a right now bullshit worry. If you take the energy that you place in worrying about stupid shit and people that don't matter and you apply it to yourself and how you can build yourself up so that way you could be useful to yourself and your friends and family that are worth being around. Yes, I said that because there are family members that you shouldn't have in your, in your small circle. And when I cut those out of my life too, man, happiness, happiness, because I'm going to tell you something, when you start making lots of money, your fucking family does not like that. They don't like that. They're going to look at you and say, you know what? This motherfucker here, you know, I never noticed this bitch has an ego problem. Look at him. He's buying these cars. Driving. Now, I, I didn't drive my car over to their house. I didn't say this is how much I pay for my car. They just found out I bought these cars. This motherfucker, look at him. Now, these are my family. <laughs> I'm a young guy. You know, I'm you know, trying to do what makes me happy as a young man. 
And I had family members literally get a case of the ass because I was enjoying what I was able to do. Your friends, don't be surprised if they don't like the fact that you're successful. And they're going to be spiteful because they are too fucking lazy to do the same things that you're willing to give yourself a chance to work and grind through. Success is not something that falls in your lap. You got to work for it. And that means that you got to take your attention away from stupid, silly shit and stupid, silly people and apply it to hard work and be diligent about it and show up every day. And when you do that, results will come. And you're going to find out who your real friends and family are because the ones that really love you, they're going to say, you know what? If anybody was going to do it, it was going to be you. And I'm so proud. Look what you've been able to accomplish. That's amazing. Can you show me what you did? Not look at you, motherfucker. You, you think you're better than me? Hey, you know, if, if you got all that money, why don't you give me some? I heard more of the latter than the first. To be honest with you, I'm going to tell you something. Not one person, not one family member ever, not one family member ever said, congratulations, you deserve it. You worked hard for this. It was not given to you. You, you did all the things to get to this point. Well done. I'm proud of you. Not one of my family members did that. Not one of them. And I handed out and I bought pool liners and put new roofs on their fucking house, paid for their fucking vacations, paid for their fucking kids' clothes and fucking shoes, paid their utility bills, put food in their fucking house, and never said anything positive. So why would you expect any of your friends and family to do the same for you? If they do, wonderful. They're good humans. But don't go into this expecting everybody else to say, you know what? Look at what you've done. You should be proud of yourself. I'm proud of you. Fuck that. I didn't need that. And people that are successful, they don't fucking need it. They don't need that. Let me tell you something. I wanted and I would give anything to hear my grandparents tell me that. But because I can't do that. To answer your question, the lady that was saying, what's my deep-rooted, driven passion? I've always done things with the expectation that I could one day hear my grandfather and my grandmother tell me, I'm proud of you. Those two people were my real mother and father. And I miss them dearly. And I wish they could see who I am today. 